Good evening, I'm Lori Tucker. And I'm Bo Williams. Thank you for joining us. A suspicious sound inside a school turned out to be a gunshot. It was a scare for West High School, but not a tragedy as a gun went off inside a classroom. WATE 6 on your side reporter Kristen Gallant joins us live from outside West High School. Lori Bow, a 14 year old male is now charged with reckless endangerment, reckless aggravated assault and possession of a weapon on school grounds. Now, no serious injuries were reported after a gun was discharged inside that student's backpack here at West High School. It all happened around 920 this morning and after a medium lockdown, students were dismissed for the day around 12. A teacher was grazed by a bullet, but again, did not have any serious injuries. They were actually able to attend a staff meeting afterwards and spoke with school, Knox County School Superintendent John Reiswick. I did have a chance to meet with a teacher and, uh, and, and have a, a conversation uh, with that individual and, uh, you know, ask, how would you like for us? We know that question is probably coming. How would you like? And, and, you know, just to show again the heart of our educators and the heart of this individual, just to say, you know, I don't want to be recognized. I took care of my kids today. I love my kids and I'll be back on Monday. Now, Ryswick adds that he believes both staff and law enforcement acted appropriately in this situation, along with working with school resource officers with the sheriff's office and KPD. Knox County Schools has their own security division. The chief of that division says they'll be having an after action review regarding this incident to see what they did well and what they could have done better. What we do is we get around the table with administrators, uh, with our, our school culture personnel to make sure the resources were brought to bear, our, our counselor, um, our HR representative, and we just uh, have, we walk through the process step by step. And we, we basically do a, a, what's like a, a, dry, a, a dry briefing basically. So we go through step by step what happened, what was brought to bear, who knew what, and then we try to bring lessons learned to the senior leadership. We let them know what actions we're gonna be taking as a result of that. So we'll be giving that information back to the senior leadership to see if there's any th things we can improve in the future. Again, that 14-year-old student is now in custody with KPD. Authorities say they believe the discharge of the weapon was unintentional. Something to note, Ryswick says none of the county schools have metal detectors. They do have S armed SROs at every school, though, guys. All right, thank you, Kristen. And Dr. Ricewick also mentioned that mental health resources will be available at West next week. And that raises an important point for this encounter, even if the teacher here was only grazed and students were not hurt. Yeah, as you know, parents have questions after violence or tragedy at school. And one of the biggest questions is, how do I talk to my kids about this? Well, today we turn to the McNabb Center for some advice. Provide connection, um, open up conversations, open up communication. Do not wait for them to come to you. Open up those conversations and, and proactively reach out to your um, children to start those conversations. And then also talk about their safety. Talk about the ways that the school may have kept them safe or talk about their fears about going back to school and what would make them feel safe in those situations. More suggestions we heard from the McNabb Center validate the child's feelings, whatever they may be. Some kids may have little to no response. Others may have strong emotions. And around those emotions, keep a child's environment predictable. Stick to the usual routine, the usual friends, and family connections.